This video is brought to you by Squarespace. It's time for another cheap versus expensive colour and pencil video and this one is between Prismacolor and Arteza. Who do you think will win? Pause the video now and let me know and I guess let's get straight to it. Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here. I put a poll on my community tab and you guys voted for Prismacolor versus Arteza so that is what I'm bringing you today. They're both wax based pencils. The Arteza set is 120 pencils while the Prismacolor set is 150. The Arteza set comes in this tin rectangular container and retails for around $60 which is 50 cents per pencil. And you can see my lid is even broken and this happened not long after I received it. I guess that gives you an idea of the quality. But there are five trays of colours and this is not the order they came in. I actually rearranged it a while ago, they had like rainbow gradients. I prefer to group my colours together. Here's what each pencil looks like. It's a pretty thick barrel and it has Arteza and Expert on one side and then the colour name, code and light fastness rating on the other. The light fastness describes its fade resistance in the sun and on the inside of the tin lid you have all the colours listed with their light fastness ratings. 1 plus is excellent light fastness and 4 pluses are only fair. The colours are also laid out on the bottom of the tin. And speaking of the colour range, I think a lot of these colours are quite unnecessary, especially if you're interested in portraiture. But anyway, moving on to the Prismacolor pencils. They come in this sturdy cardboard box and the 150 set retails for around $182, which comes to $1.21 per pencil. This is nearly two and a half times more expensive than the Arteza pencils. Like the Arteza pencils, they come in trays and there are six in the Prismacolor set. The pencils are thinner than Arteza's, they also have a thinner lead and it doesn't have a protective barrel where the Arteza does so if you drop the Prismacolor pencils you might end up breaking the lead on the inside. It has Prismacolor Premier and the colour names and codes and the back of the box also has swatches and there isn't any indication as to the light fastness but the website just says they're light fast richly saturated pigments and to be honest I don't think that's good enough. Here is a light fastness chart I found online. Now I'm going to do a series of tests and I'm not swatching all 270 colours because honestly, ain't nobody got time for all of that. But I'm just going to swatch a few colours to get a sense of how these pencils feel. And I'm not going to lie to you, I really hate how these pencils feel. It's so hard to explain but the wax is waxing too much. It feels like the binding agent is causing a resistance between the pencil and the paper and it's just not as smooth or buttery as I would expect. You regular subscribers know I love using colouring pencils for realism and I'm so sorry to say but these might be the worst pencils I've ever tried. Of course this is just based off of initial impressions so let's see if that changes during the video but I'm not really liking this so far. I'm swatching similar colours on the Prismacolor side and on first glance they definitely look similar but they feel very different. The Prismacolor feels very buttery and soft to use and the Arteza I'm not really sure what it's doing. So moving on to the blend test, I'm starting with a two colour blend and I'm using the layering method. I'm not going to speak about it in this video because I have several videos of this on my channel and I'll link one above but both brands create beautiful blends. The Prismacolors are nicer pencils to use in my opinion but you can see both blends are very smooth and very pretty. And the exact same with the three colour blends although I think the Arteza blend has a nicer gradient, I do think the Prismacolors blend smoother. I can kind of see patchiness on the left. But okay, it is drawing time and here is the reference I'll be using. You can find it in my Pinterest board linked below. Before I attempt the drawing you saw in the thumbnail, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Squarespace. You're creating beautiful art and you really do deserve to show off on a nice website. Squarespace gives you the opportunity to stand out online with a professional looking website. You can choose from one of their customizable templates and it's so easy to use. You don't need any coding experience at all. If you sell your art online, their customizable e-commerce templates allow you to sell your work directly and to also bill for your design services. If you're more of a person that sells your products in person, Squarespace automatically keeps your inventory and sales data in sync with your online store. So what are you waiting for? Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial or when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com forward slash Temi for 10% off your website or domain. Support the brands and support your girl and let's get back to the drawing. I'll be drawing in this tan sketchbook. By the way, all of my supplies are linked down in the description box as usual, and I'm going to quickly transfer my sketch and we can get going. Start 
Starting of course with the cheap side, which is Arteza, and the method I'm using for this drawing is the layering technique. And to be honest, I don't really have faith in this side. I'm trying to stay positive, but based off of just the simple swatches I did earlier, I don't know what Arteza is gonna give me. I don't know if I got a bad batch of pencils, but I just don't like how they feel when I draw with them. Also, this is my first time using the Strathmore Tone Tan paper. Many colour and pencil artists rave about this sketchbook, but in my opinion, it is not worth the hype. I personally don't like drawing on super smooth paper, and this is definitely the smoothest paper I've ever tried. Smooth and hairy. <laughs> Honestly, I don't understand why people like it so much because I find that when paper is too smooth, it just makes it more difficult to layer. It's like I'm burnishing from layer one. So maybe my dislike of this process isn't specific to the Arteza pencils, but the combination of the weird pencil texture and the super smooth paper was just a no-no for me. That being said, I'm still able to apply the colors in layers. I just feel like it's a lot more difficult to do so with these supplies. Also, I think the white pencil isn't that good. You can see that it's not really standing out and I'll go in with a white pen later. But I don't know if it's the paper stopping me from layering or if it's just the pencil that just isn't great. Ironically, I think the drawing is looking quite good, but I'm definitely missing some super smooth blends. I'm seeing a little bit of patching. And yeah, now I'll move on to the Prismacolor side. If you're a regular subscriber, you know how often I use colouring pencils on my channel. I've tried loads of different brands and Prismacolors are pencils I often reach for because of how nice and easy they are to use. Obviously this lip reference isn't symmetrical so I'm not testing the exact same thing on both sides but I think it's still enough for me to understand how different they work. Unfortunately I think my biggest issue with the comparison like I said before is the paper. I do find that the prism colours are nicer to blend with but I still kind of have the issue with the burnish layer and just trying to do any sort of layering that makes sense. Something I didn't mention earlier, but the Prismacolor colour range is actually really nice and much more tailored to portraits, I think. They have some extra colours that really allowed me to achieve nice realism on this side. So they've got some more olive greens, they've got some more rose tones. All of these colours just really added to it and I find that the Arteza pencils just have a bunch of bright colours. Necessarily useful, especially for realism. Also, please ignore the teeth. <laughs> the white, I don't think the white of either brand worked very well on this paper. So it's just looking a little bit higgy and haggard. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
But by the way, I know I'm complaining about this paper a lot, but the reason I chose to use this paper was because drawing glossy and shiny objects always pops more when it's on tan paper as opposed to white paper. And this is the only tan paper I own. So I thought instead of having to draw the lips and then having to shade the skin behind it so that you see the lips in context, this kind of paper just allows it to pop right off the page. And I'm sure you can agree that adding the white highlights just really brings out the pop of shine. Although I did not enjoy the process, I'm quite pleased with how this drawing turned out. So who won the comparison for you? Did you guess right at the start of the video? Don't forget to use my Squarespace link for 10% off. Take a look here if you want more tips for portraits and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.